Hello and welcome. My name is Frankie, and in this short video, we are going to learn about Fetch API and how to use it to fetch data so that we may use it in our projects. On the left, we have our code editor. We have a simple JavaScript file open. And if we look at the file structures, the only other file is our index.html file, which I use to load the scripts.js. And on the right, we have a browser with its console open. This way, when we console log our data as we get it, we'll be able to see it. We'll be getting our data from JSON placeholder, which returns fake data and it's perfect for testing or learning purposes. Coming back to our code, I've taken the URL provided by JSON placeholder. We're going to be using the forward slash users, which returns 10 users. This is going to be perfect for what we're doing today. I've stored that URL in a variable API endpoint to make it easier for us to call that URL later in this tutorial. We're going to start with a function to fetch our data. We'll call this function get data and we'll make it asynchronous because the fetch API returns a promise. We'll continue with the arrow function syntax and we'll call our function because we are going to be console logging information from within that function. The first step in this function is to use the fetch method to fetch our data. So we'll create a variable, const res for response. We'll use the await key because remember, we are working with a promise and we'll use the fetch method to go out to our URL, which is a PI endpoint. And then I'm going to console log what we are receiving. Now we're not done, but I am console logging because I want you to see exactly what it is we're getting. We see that we get an object. This object has many properties. What we're needing is a JSON. So we're going to use the .json method to take this and give us the JSON that we need. To do this, we'll create a variable. I'll call it data. I'm still using the await key because we're still working with a promise. Then I'll take my response or my res variable and I'll apply the dot JSON method to it. Now I can console log my data. And you'll see that what we've gotten back is an array. This array has multiple objects and each object represents a user. Now we can use methods such as the dot map method to iterate through each object and extract the information that we need. But there's one last thing. We have to handle errors. By default, our response will return whether it's okay or if it's not okay. So before we begin to convert our data to JSON, we'll add an if statement. Simply, if the response is not okay, the exclamation mark means not. So if it's not okay, we'll throw this error, letting us know that there was an error when fetching our data from the API endpoint. So there you go. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like or subscribe for more content in the future. Thank you.